If you are struggling to get your head around the DAXA table functions, this video is for you. If you need to simply digest the concept of filter context, as well as the difference between internal and external filter, please watch this video till the end. In the previous video, PP02, we had a discussion around star schema and the difference between implicit and explicit measures, among other important topics. In this video, PP03, we are going to discuss four topics. First one is filter context. Second is measures versus calculated columns. And then DAX iterator functions, which I call it X family. And finally, internal and external filters. 11 DAX functions will be used in our example today out of which three DAX iterator functions, which is SUMX, Average X, and Rank X, together with eight other DAX functions. Let's go directly and have a look at today's example. In our example today, we have one fact table containing the sales transaction. As you can see, we have three columns, product ID, quantity, and the date of each transaction. And then we have one dimension table that contains the basic information about the products. It has also three columns, product ID, the name of the product, and finally, the price of each product. And we already pushed these two tables inside the data model, and we created one relation between these two tables. It is one to many relation, the relation coming from dimension table, which I call it price KG, going to the sales T table, which is our transaction table. And the relation is based on the field product ID, which is the common field between the two tables. And finally, we create one measure to calculate the total quantity. And we have four requirements. First one is the sales revenue by product. Then we need to calculate the average revenue per transaction, the average daily revenue, and finally, the rank for each product according to the sales revenue. Here is our Excel file. You can see our two tables. First one is the transaction table. If you go to table design on the left hand side, we call it sales T. On the right hand side, we have the dimensional table or the lookup table, and we call it, as you can see, price KG. If you go to the power pivot window, you can see our two tables here. If you look at the diagram view, we have the two tables, and we created a one to many relation. The one to many relation coming from the dimension table or lookup table going to the transaction table, the sales T table. And this relation is based on the common field product ID. And you can see here, the only measure that we have is total quantity. Going back to the data view, here is the total quantity. You can see the total is 952. The first step is to create a pivot table in order to report our sales quantity by product. So from power pivot window, from the home ribbon, I'm going to the pivot table icon. Once I click on it, it will return back to the normal Excel window. The create pivot table window will pop up. I need to put it in the existing worksheet and I'm going to select the exact cell that I want to start the pivot table in. Then click on OK, OK one more time. And here you go, the new pivot table placeholder created. Let me give it a name. I'm going to pivot table analyze and I'm going to call it sales report. On the right hand side, you can see the pivot table fields. I have two tables. The first one is the price KG and then the sales T. I want to report the total quantity. So I'm going to open the sales T table and I'm going to select the only measure that we have total quantity and I'm going to drop it in the value. Here you go, total quantity 952. I want to see this quantity by product. So I'm going to price KG, the dimensional table. I'm going to select the fruit. Fruit is the name of the column containing the product's name. So I'm going to select fruit and drag it inside the rows. And here you go, I have a report for quantity by product. But what happened? If you go back to the power pivot window, I have the total 952. But when I drop it inside the pivot table, it gives me the exact report I want, the quantity by product. How this happened? This is what we call it the filter context. So let's try to understand exactly what happened here. I have here my two tables, the fact table and the lookup table, and I have the one to many relation between these two tables based on the product ID, which is the common column between both tables. Then I created my pivot table and let's try to understand what happened in the first line. So the first line in the pivot table, when I dropped the fruit column inside the rows, I have a unique list of all the products. The first line is the apple. The pivot table 
went to the lookup table and tried to locate the port ID associated with the fruit name, which is in this case Apple. The corresponding port ID is 1001. And then through the one to many relation, it went to the fact table and tried to find how many times the 1001 occurred inside the fact table. And in this case, it occurred only twice. So what happened next? The fact table filter down to be only two rows the only two rows containing the product id 1001 and then the sum function started to calculate the total of the quantity column which is in this case 150 and then going to the next row and doing exactly the same looking at the product id inside the lookup table it was 1002 inside the fact table it occurred four times the fact table filtered down to be only four rows all containing the 100 and the sum is 197 in this case and then going to the pH line same as but this time it occurred only once and the quantity sum is only 32 and so on and so forth till the end of the table and this is what we call the filter context now let's try to follow the requirements for this example one by one first one is the sales revenue by product let's have a look at our tables i don't have a column called revenue i have the quantity in one table which is basically the transaction table and i have the price inside the price kg table or the lookup table if you want to solve this issue using the normal excel sheet formulas you are going to add a helper column here and you're going to use the VLOOKUP in order to allocate the correct price for each and every line of these lines using the product ID as a common column between the two tables. So in order to do this inside the data model, I'm going to try a concept or a technique very similar to the VLOOKUP, but inside the data model. So let me go back to the Power Pivot window. And I have here my transaction table and I want to add another column. In this column, I'm going to bring the price from the price kg table in order to perform the multiplication of the quantity times the price and then calculate the revenue for each and every line. In order to add a column inside this table, if you look at the headers, you have your three columns and then you have the add column word written here. It's a little bit dimmed, but if you double click on it, it will allow you to type. And once you type here, it will automatically add a new column. So let me call this revenue and then hit enter. Once I hit enter, it will prompt me inside the formula bar and you are not allowed to type anything here, but a formula or expression in order to calculate whatever you want inside this formula. So let's think about what we want to do. We want to bring the prices. The prices are inside another table and we need something very similar to the VLOOKUP function. And the VLOOKUP function inside data model is basically the related function. So I'm going to start with related. Once I start to write REL, I have here my options. First one is related. I'm going to hit the tab button and I have my options here. Because I have a relation between the two tables, so it will give me all the choices coming from the other table. So the related is following the one to many relation and it can bring information from the lookup table inside the transaction table. So in this case, I need from the price KG table, I have three columns, the fruit, the name of the product, and I have the prices and the product ID for sure. I need the price. So I'm going to select the price, double click and then close the bracket and let me hit enter and let's see what we'll have. You can see here I have all the prices. This is not exactly what I want, but I just want to, wanted to show you the result of the related. So I need to add another step inside the same formula. So I'm going to multiply this. I'm going to edit again inside the formula bar and then use the multiply operator. And I want to multiply the quantity. Inside the data model, you cannot write a set reference. You can only give a column headers. So I'm going to use the quantity so i'm going to type q and you have your options here you have quantity and then sales t quantity i would prefer to give the full name it will give you the same so if you use the quantity or sales t quantity it will give you the same results but in this case you have first the name of the table and then between two square brackets you have the name of the field so it's much better to use the full qualified name so i'm going to double click here and then hit enter and here you go you have the revenue for each and every line i can add number formatting for this column so i'm going to the home ribbon and from the formatting section i am going to use the english united states the currency english united states 
and I can reduce the decimal numbers to zero decimal numbers. Now I have a column containing the revenue. I can add another measure calculating the revenue by just summing the column of the revenue. So I'm going to the measure grid. I'm going to start to write total revenue. But let me call it between two brackets AC stands for added column because I'm going to calculate using another method. So I'm going to put the column meaning that the name is already ended and then equal meaning that I'm going to write the formula. So the formula here or the function here will be the sum SUM first choice is sum and then I need to select the revenue column. I can either just write revenue. So it will give me all the options. As I told you, I need to put the full qualified name. So I'm going to select the one starting with the name of the table sales T and then between two square brackets revenue, double click, close the bracket and enter. I can add also some number formatting here. I'm going to use the same English United States and zero decimal places. Here you go. You have the total revenue. I can go back to my pivot table. If you go down to the sales T table, you have your new measure total revenue AC. If you just drag it into the values, here you go. You have your report. You have the total quantity and the total revenue. And the same happened for the total revenue. It goes through the filter context and I have my report by product ready exactly as what happened for the total quantity measure. And we already discussed this in the previous section. To wrap up what happened here, I have my original transaction table of three columns. I added a new column to calculate the revenue. I bring the prices from the price KG table and then I multiply each and every price to the quantity, the correspondent quantity to get a column with the calculation of the revenue. And then I added a measure just to sum up the revenue column. There is a disadvantage about this, which is basically increasing the number of columns and basically increasing the size of your file. However, there is something that is an advantage, which is basically having your calculation ready. Whenever you call this calculation inside any of your pivot tables or inside any report, it's already there. You just presented inside the pivot table. So what happened here? I evaluated all the rows and I stored the calculation inside the file itself. It is not the only way that I can calculate the revenue using two tables like I, what I have here. So I can do this directly using a measure, not using an edit column. And this will be exactly the next section of this video. Now let's try to calculate the revenue, but without adding a calculated column, I want to do this inside a measure. So let's try to do a similar technique. I'm going to use the related because I'm going to bring the prices from the price KG table inside this measure. And also I'm going to multiply by the quantity. And also I'm going to add all of this inside a sum function because I cannot have a measure with multiple values. The outcome of a measure cannot be multiple values or table or column. It has to be a single value. So I need to aggregate the outcome of the multiplication of the quantity times the price using a function like sum. So let's try together. I'm going to call this measure total revenue, but between two brackets, I'm going to type M and this to differentiate between the previous one, M for measure and then colon and equal. And let's try writing the sum. So I need a sum function and inside sum function, I'm going to use related, the same function related. And then I'm going to open a bracket for related. I can bring, and you can see here, it gives me all the options. It gives me the sales table options and also the price KG option. Why? Because actually the measure is not belonging to any table. So it's just written inside this table, but it is not belonging to the table itself. This context, the measure context is not in relation with the price KG in any way. So that's why this function will not work inside this context. The related, with the sum, it will not work. But let me try to, to continue and let's see what will happen. I need the prices and then close the bracket and then times. I need the quantity. Let me uh, select the sales T quantity and then close the bracket. And you can see it give me this red line. If I hit enter, it will give you this error. So it will not work. So in order to have this work, I need something that can start from one table and go to another table. I need a function that can start with a table. So this function should have a table as one of its parameters. And also this, fu this function should be working with the table on an iterative way. 
it relative meaning that it can evaluate row by row it can go to the first row inside this table and see exactly what related to this table inside the price kg table and then bring the price and do the multiplication and then move to the next row and do the same next row do the same and so on and so forth and after finishing this it will aggregate all together and this is exactly how the iterator functions works and this is exactly the function that we are going to use now which is sum x so instead of sum i'm going to put x at, at the end and this is the first function that we are going to see from the x family today so it is sum x so let me cut this out control x and try to follow the steps for sum x so if you look at the screen tip it starts with the table so here i'm going to tell this function what exact table you need to iterate over in this case i need the sum x to iterate over the sales t which is my transaction table so i'm going to write sales t and then comma and then i have my expression so i can here freely write my expression and the expression will be iterated over each and every line of the sales t table so let's put our related function now related price kg and then times the quantity this is legitimate and this will work perfectly let me hit enter and here you go the exact same result like the total revenue that calculated using the added column let me add the number formatting english united states with zero decimal places back to our pivot table down i have here the total revenue m using the measure if you put it inside your pivot table here you go you have the same exact result but this time using the dax iterator instead of having added columns let's start to understand what happened this time i have here my transaction table my three columns i started by writing the measure you can see here the sum x measure i started with the table here is my table i want this function to iterate over each and every line of this table using an expression expression started after the comma related price kg price so it will bring all the prices or price by price for each and every row from the price kg table and then it will multiply it times each and every quantity based on the relation between the two tables and here in a simulation with what will happen it will bring the 15 for the 1002 15 times 29 435 and then go to the next line and next line and next line at end of the day the sum function will aggregate all together into a single value and bring you the exact result like the calculated column the difference here nothing calculated and stored inside the table it's all calculated online at the calculation time so the calculation will happen at the time that you drop this measure inside the pivot table and nothing is stored inside your table this is an advantage because it will reduce the storage volume however it will take more time for calculation and this is exactly the opposite of what we can do using the calculated column at the end of the day it's a trade-off if you have enough storage if you have no problem with the storage so you can just use a calculated column if you have an issue with the size of your data you can just use the dax iterator and you will expect some delay in the calculation when it comes to very very large amount of data now let's go to the second requirement of our list which is basically the average revenue per transaction in order to calculate the average revenue per transaction i need to calculate the revenue which i already have and also i need to count the number of transactions for the total and also for each and every product so let's go directly to the power pivot window and see how we can write this measure i'm going to use a very simple function called count it's very similar to that one that we have in the normal excel sheet formula it will count the number of rows in any of the columns of this table i'm going to start by giving a name for this measure which i'm going to call average revenue per transaction colon and equal and let's start by the count function cou first option is count tab and let's count any numerical column of this table let me take the sales t quantity and then close the bracket and then enter and let's see the result the result as you can see is 19 which is basically the count of the rows of this table now i need to calculate the average revenue per transaction i'm going to use one of the two measures that we already calculated for the revenue so very carefully inside the formula bar before the count function i'm going to use one of the two measures 
In order to use a measure inside a measure, I need to start with the open square bracket. It will give me the list of all measures. In this case, let me take the total revenue M and then double click and then I'm going to use the divide operator. So now I have the total revenue divided by the count of the sales quantity. This will basically give me the average revenue per transaction. And you can see it's approximately $1,260 for each transaction. I can add number formatting. Let me take the English United States and I'm going to reduce the number of decimal places. Let's go back to the Excel sheet. From the pivot table list, I'm going down to the new measure, average revenue per transaction. Let me drop it in the value. And here you go, you have the average revenue per transaction for the total and also for each and every product as you can see. But I can show you another way to do this with one function, which is basically the average X, the second function from the X family that we are going to discuss today. So let's do another measure. I'm going back to the power pivot window and let me write a new measure. This time I'll call it average revenue per transaction between two brackets. I can put something like X to differentiate from the previous one, colon and equal. And let's start to write the average X function. AV, my third choice is average X and then tab. Similar to some X, it starts with the table. The function needs to know which table exactly that you want to iterate over. In this case, it will be the sales T table. So I'm going to write sales. Here you go, the sales T and then I'm going to write the expression. I can use the same expression that I used inside the sum X, which is basically using related to bring the prices from the price KG table and then multiply by the quantity. Or I can use the revenue measure itself, the revenue measure that we calculated, which is basically the total revenue M. So in order to use a measure inside another measure, I'm going to write open square bracket. I have here all the options. The last choice is the one that I want, total revenue M and then tab close the bracket and then hit enter and let's do the same number formatting and obviously it is the same results back to our pivot table here is the pivot table fields the last one is the new one average revenue per transaction x i'm going to check it now if you compare both measures together they are identical i managed to get the same results using different ways first one was the total revenue divided by the count of the transactions and the second one was using the average X function. Let's continue our requirements. The next one will be the average daily revenue. In order to calculate the average daily revenue, I need to divide the revenue by the number of days, not the number of transactions. If you look at our table, you will see that in some days I have more than one transaction per day. So the average will be completely different. In some products will be the same, but in other products will be completely different and I need to count the number of unique days. So if you count these dates, it is around 19. But if you count distinct list of the days, it will be less than that. I think it will be 15. So let's try together and see what will happen. I'm going back to the Power Pivot window. And from Power Pivot window, I'm going to add another measure. This time, I'm going to call it average revenue per day, colon and equal. And let's try to get the count of the unique days inside this table. I'm going to use a new function called distinct count. So let's try together. D I S. My second choice is distinct count tab. It requires only one argument, which is basically a column name. So in this case, the column name will be the sales T date. So the column of the date inside the sales T table, double click and then close the bracket and then enter. We have only 15 unique days inside this table. So if we divide the revenue over 15, it will be obviously higher than the average revenue per transaction, which was basically the total revenue divided by 19. 19 was the total number of transactions. So in order to do so, I'm going to edit inside the formula bar. Again, I'm going to bring the total revenue measure, open square bracket, I'm going to select total revenue M, and then the divide operator and enter. And here you go. You have almost 1600 instead of 1260. Let me also give it some number formatting English United States and zero decimal places. Go back to your pivot table. Down here you have the new measure. You can just drop it inside your pivot table. And here you go. You have the average revenue per day. You can see that it is the same for some products, but completely different for other products, especially the last one, the strawberry and also for the mango. 
I want to show you that we can also calculate this average day revenue using the average X function, but we need to think a little bit in order to get it right. Let's go back to the power pivot window. Let me add another measure. This time will be average revenue per day, but let me put X inside two brackets in order to differentiate from the previous one and then colon and equal. This time I'm going to use the average X as I mentioned. This is my function. It needs a table. Let's start by thinking a little bit about the table that we want to give to the average X function. If we ask the average X function to iterate over the entire table of the uh, sales T table, it will give me exactly the same result as we get for the average revenue per transaction because number of lines, number of rows is 19, which is basically the number of transactions. So I need to give average X a subset of this table. So I need to give average X a smaller table, which contains only a list or one column containing the distinct list of the days. In order to do so, I need to get a unique list, not the count of the unique list, but I need to get the unique list of days itself. I can get this list using a function called distinct. So let me try to write distinct, D-I-S-T. This is the only option, distinct, and it requires a column name or a table name. For me, I'm going to give it the date column. Why? Because I need a unique list of the dates and then the average X function will iterate over the subset that I created using the distinct. So let me give it the sales T date and then close the bracket for the distinct. Then I need to give the expression. In this case, I'm going to use also the total revenue expression, which is total revenue M, open a square bracket and select total revenue M, tab, close the bracket for the average X and hit enter. And here you go, you get the exact same result as you can see here. So let me put the number formatting, go back and I can add the new measure, average revenue per day. And if you compare the two measures, they are identical. The average revenue per day calculated using the distinct count and the one that we use the average X and also the distinct instead of distinct count, both are identical as you can see. So the final requirement is to get the product rank according to the sales revenue. So I need something to look at each and every product and look at the corresponding total revenue for each product and give the rank according to that. In order to do so, I'm going to use the third DAX iterator function, which is basically the rank X. Let's go directly to the power pivot window and add a new measure. This time I'm going to call it rank and then colon equal. And let's start to write the rank X function, R-A-N-K. So second option is rank X tab and then let's follow the screen tip. First requirement is a table. So I need a table. This time I cannot use the sales T table. Why? Because I want to get the rank according to the product. So I need at the beginning a list of all the products. The list of the products are inside the price KG table. So I'm going to use the price KG table as the first input for the rank X and then I need an expression and it's very obvious that I want to rank according to the revenue. I have the revenue calculated inside a measure. I'm going to write open square bracket to get the list of all the measures and I'm going to use the last one, the total revenue M in order to evaluate this expression, which is basically a measure by iterating over each and every line of the price KG table. Then I'm going to close the bracket and then hit enter and let's see what will happen. I have rank one. I'm not sure if this is correct or not, but it is one now because it is aggregation. If we go back and drop this inside our pivot table, we are going to see what will happen exactly. So let's go back to the Excel sheet. And down in the pivot table fields, I have my last measure, which is rank. And here you go. I have rank one at each and every line, which is not exactly what I was expecting. Let's try to think about what happened here and let's check the concept of the filter context that we try to understand at the beginning of this video. If you remember what happened when we tried to put the apple inside the pivot table, 
the pivot table, went to the lookup table, and try to find the product ID corresponding to the fruit apple. And then it goes through the one-to-many relation to the fact table and filter it down to only have the lines containing the product ID 1001. At, at the time that we tried to get the rank, this is exactly what happened. According to the filter context, the external filter, which is coming from the pivot table, impacted the fact table, it filtered down the fact table to be only the apple. So if you compare apple to apple, apple will be all the way number one. Also, this will happen for banana. I have a table containing only banana. So the rank of banana inside all bananas will be always number one and so on and so forth. So what we need in order to get this right, we need a function or something can impact the external filter, can stop the external filter or impose another filter that coming from the model itself, coming from the DAX that we write itself. And this is what we call internal filter. So we need an internal filter to override the external filter coming from the pivot table and stop filtering down the fact table according to the external filter. And this function will be a very simple function called all. And let's go back to the Power Pivot window and try to write it together. From Power Pivot window, I'm going inside my rank measure, inside the rank X function. And before the price KG table, I'm going to write the function all. And function all, in this case, will tell the data model, please don't listen to the external filter. Ignore completely the filter coming from the pivot table. And I need all the rows for the price KG table. So I'm going to write all ALL -L, and then tab. And I'm going to wrap the price KG with this function. So I'm going to close the bracket after the price KG table. And the all function is falling in the category of filter functions. And the functionality, as I mentioned, it will ignore any filter coming from the pivot table or it will help me to override the external filter. Then I'm going to hit enter and let's go back to the pivot table. Here you go, the rank function started to work properly. Let me try to get rid of some of these measures in order to look at the rank function clearly. So as you can see here, apple is number two, strawberry number one, banana number three, and so on and so forth. But the, the thing that I didn't like that I have one in the grand total. So I need to overcome this. I need to delete this or to get rid of this. And I'm going to use this using a very simple technique, using two functions together. First one is the if function. And the second one is a function called has one value. So let's go back and try to do this together inside the formula bar. And before the rank X function, I need to ask Excel a question. The question is basically, are you working inside the grand total line or not? So this one, in order to ask this, I need to ask a question about the number of values that you are handling inside this line. So if it is a single value, so it is inside one line, one normal line of the pivot table. If it is more than one value, so you are working inside the grand total. In order to ask this question, I need to use the function called has one value. So the has one value will get an answer of true or false. If it is running inside a normal line inside the pivot table, it will give me a true. And if it is working inside the grand total, it will give me a false. And based on this true or false coming from the function, I'm going to use an if function in order to go to different direction based on this true or false. Let me start by the if function. So before the rank X function, I'm going to write if and then tab. And then the logical test will be the has one value function. So I'm going to use has one value, my second option. And then the has one value function requires a column. The column will be the list of the product names from the price KG table. So I'm going to use fruit and then close the bracket. Now I'm done with the logical test, which is the outcome from has one value function. Then I'm going to write a comma comma will move me to the result if true. The result if true will be my rank X function and the result if, if false will be blank. So in order to write blank, I can just use the blank function. It will give me an output of a blank value, then close the bracket for the if and then hit enter. And now you can see the one that we used to see here converted to a blank. And if you go back to the pivot table, you will see that the one in the grand total disappeared and you have only the rank as you can see here. So let's try now to sort this. I'm going to sort the pivot table using 
the normal sort functionality inside the Excel. So I'm going to sort from A to Z. And you can see number one is strawberry, which is basically the highest revenue. Let me get rid of this as well. So the highest revenue for strawberry and then apple and then banana and then mango and then peach. And you can see the rank is working descending. And also this is the default. It starts with the highest number and then the next and the next and the next till the lowest number inside the list. So if you want to reverse this order, so I need to have the peach, which is the smallest peach and mango, the smallest to be uh, the rank number one. I can do so. It's very easy. I can go back to the power pivot window and inside the rank X function itself. If you go after the last parameter, if you put one comma, you will notice that you have three optional arguments. First one is value and then order and then ties. I want to handle the order one. So I'm going to give another comma and moving to the order. I have the ascending and descending. Descending is the default. So I'm going to select ascending and then hit enter. And let's go back to the pivot table. And you can see that it starts with the mango. Mango is the lowest and then peach. Also, we have a tie here. So I have one, one and then three. It skips number two and then four and then five. And also here is the default. It will skip number two because I have two ones or, or two firsts. So it will skip the second and then go to the third and fourth and so on and so forth. If I need this to be one, one, and then two and three and four, I can also change this inside the function, the rank function. So let, let me go back to the power pivot window. From the power pivot window after the, the order, after the parameter of the orders, if you do another comma, you have the ties, how to handle the ties. You have two options, either dense or skip. The default one is skip, which used inside the formula. Now I can change this to dense and then enter. And let's go back and see what will happen inside the pivot table. And you can see now I have first and then another first and then second and third and fourth and so on and so forth. And here how you can handle the rank function. You have a lot of parameters inside the rank function that you can use in order to get the result the way that you want. And now we managed to get all our requirements, the sales revenue by product, average revenue per transaction, average day revenue and product rank according to sales revenue. That was all for today. It was a very, very long and hopefully useful video. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe and leave me a comment. And here we'll find some useful links. Please check them out and see you in next video and bye.